Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back. Really appreciate it. I hope you're having an awesome day. And um, just like I did in a recent video, which I'll put right there, uh, where I did kind of a quick deep dive on the adjustable gradient filter, I thought I'd do the same thing on bicolor toning. I think it's a very uh, often overlooked filter, and I think if you uh, click on the presets and start adding them to your photos, Initially, you, you might just be like, oh God, that doesn't really work. But I think if you sort of massage it a little bit, you know, move things around, adjust the colors and the gradient zone and that sort of stuff, I think you can really make some uh, impact on your photos with the bicolor toning filter. So I'm gonna jump into that. So here we go. Um, once again, just like I did in that other video, I'm gonna start with a, a blank gray uh, piece of paper just to show how the filter works. So um, when you launch the filter, it defaults to this toning preset here, and you can see there's a number of different uh, toning presets built in. Um, you can just drag the amount slider to the right, and I'll just go to 100, just so that it better illustrates um, what's happening on the photo. And you can see there, uh, as you can see, top color and bottom color. Uh, the top color is the purple, and the bottom color is the orange. And you can set orientation, and there you go. It's the same as any adjustable gradient filter. You can adjust this one you know, left or right, uh, that sort of thing. And you can expand the gradient zone. You can collapse it as well, uh, as well as move this up and down the photo. So what that does, again, just like adjustable gradient, is uh, for the top portion of the photo, and your top color is purple, according to this. Again, um, just an example color. Um, you get the full effect of the purple above that top line. Between the top line and the center line, you get sort of a graduated version of that color. And then the bottom color, which is the gold, you can see that there, you have from the center line down to that bottom line, you have starting from kind of like none, it gradually becomes more gold. And then once you get to this bottom line, all the way to the bottom of your photo, you get the full impact of that color. Now you can also turn off the top or bottom. So if I turn off the bottom, the gold is gone and I just have the purplish kind of color, lavender, whatever it is, on the top. And I can do the reverse, of course where I turn off the top so that purple lavender is gone, and all I have is the bottom color, which is the gold. Um, the presets all exist in here, so you can just click through and find one that you like, or uh, more accurately, probably not uh, don't like, um, because a lot of these, I mean, they're fairly intense, right? And now I have it at 100 as well, but just keep in mind, this is a, a kind of a blank sheet of paper. Um, that kind of blue is pretty cool. I often will use um, like this on a sunset, but I'll tone it down quite a bit. Anyway, I'm just clicking through some of the presets. Let me get a photo. Um, here we go. And um, I'll go ahead and show you uh, how I would use it on a photo. So I'm going to go ahead and move this uh, up. And I'm going to put it at, let's say, uh, 70. There we go. So uh, this may not be the preset that I choose. I might go to this one uh, because I use that one some on some sunsets. And initially, you're going to say, whoa, Jim, like two blue, two gold. And that's true. Um, you can reduce that by reducing the uh, the amount slider, but I can go back up here to 70 or whatever. Um, you can also change the colors. So all you do is you click in this box and a color wheel opens. And so if you haven't used a color wheel before, it gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, this is basically the darkness or the exposure value of the color you're choosing. And I tend to go a little bit more that way, especially on a photo like this, because I want the sky to be a bit brighter. So remember, we're working on the top and we're in the blue. You choose your color here by just kind of you know moving this around the photo. But I was kind of in the blue. I think something uh, kind of like that looks pretty good. And um, maybe a, about there. So not all the way light, but not all the way dark. Um, for the bottom, actually the first thing I would do is probably come in and set orientation. I want to get more blue in that sky and not so much um, getting into the mountains. And so I'm going to, I'm just kind of adjusting the gradient here, which you saw me do kind of in that, uh, uh, in the gray, uh, in the gray sheet of paper that I had. So, um, maybe do something like that on the gradient. And then for the bottom color, I think it's just two gold. Um, I think I would probably go a little bit more kind of in this sunset, a little bit to the pink, but you know, mostly kind of close to the colorless. Um, and there you go. I mean, I think that's a pretty nice looking photo and I've only used one filter. So here's the before and here's the after. Now I might adjust that color a little bit and you know, I could darken it by going like that. Um, but I kind of like it a little bit lighter and I don't know, maybe I want a little bit different color. I'm just kind of messing around. I don't really know what color I want. I don't want green. 
Uh, blue's not bad, like a lighter blue, like maybe, I don't know, that's not really it. I think I'm going to stick over here kind of in the uh, lighter kind of yellow. Um, anyway, the point is not that, hey, you can use bicolor toning and not use any other filters. Much like uh, most of my videos, I use multiple filters. I just wanted to illustrate how you can use bicolor toning because I think it's very powerful and I think it's overlooked. It may be one of the most underrated and overlooked photos in Luminar. And by the way, it's in Luminar Flex, which I'm in right now. It's in Luminar 3. It's also in Luminar 2018. It's the same filter in any of these. But if you just turn that off, in fact, I'll just do it up here. You can see before and after. I've made a nice little color shift. Um, and if you do this slider, you can see that it's, it's had a nice impact on the photo. Now, I'm not done. I would come in probably negative structure and smooth out some of that water. It was a long exposure, but I'd probably accentuate that a little bit more. Uh, and I might would add some other things. I mean, you, you know, you could try kind of whatever here, maybe golden hour just to give the whole thing a little bit of warmth. I'm making this up as I go. I don't really know how that's going to look. Um, it looks okay. You know, maybe it's a little too pink on the bottom. So that makes me want to come over here and maybe adjust this a little bit. Um, you know, again, kind of playing around. Um, I don't know. I kind of like it in that area, something like that. But the point is, again, just simply that you can stack multiple filters to get the look you want. However, this was really about how to use bicolor toning, uh, the flexibility that you have with it. And despite the fact that there are presets built in, I generally use them very much as a starting point, not as a one-click sort of option. And by the way, you can always kind of reduce the intensity there and maybe, you know, maybe like it at 50 instead of 70. I think that looks pretty nice, again, compared to the initial photo. I think we've got some nice colors. And that's really how bicolor toning works. It's very similar to adjustable gradient in terms of the set orientation component, which allows you to change the size and orientation of the gradient zone. Uh, but then outside of that, you have these color controls for top and bottom. Super flexible, super fun. That's how it works, my friends. And I just wanted to do a quick deep dive on bicolor toning. Hope it helps you with your photos. Great for landscapes, great for seascapes. I think it actually works on cityscapes as well. Um, that's how I use it, and that's a quick primer on that filter. So like, subscribe, share with your friends. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you soon, my friends. Take care, and adios.